<laughs> Let's go. I want to buy the police for murder, but the real killers for knowing too much. Her name was Flea London. He was a young man about my own height, with an ill-nourished mustache and wearing a flat blue cap and white overalls. I reckon you're a bit of a sportsman, and I want you to do me a service. Lend me your cap and overall for ten minutes, and here's a sovereign for you. His eyes open at the sight of the gold, and he grinned broadly. What's the game? A bet. I haven't time to explain, but to win it, I've got to be a milkman for the next ten minutes, and all you've got to do is to stay here till I come back. You'll be a bit late, but nobody will complain, and you'll have that quid for yourself. Right. I ain't the man to spoil a bit of sport. Here's the rig, governor. <laughs> Wearing this hat and overalls, I went whistling downstairs. At first, I thought there was nobody in the street. Then I, oops. then I caught sight of a policeman a hundred yards down and a loafer shuffling past on the other side. Across the street in character, whistling gaily and imitating the jaunty swing of the milkman. An impulse made me raise my eyes to the house opposite and there at the first floor window was a face. As the loafer passed, he looked up, and I fancied a signal was exchanged. Then I took the first side street. There was no one in the alleyway, so I dropped the milk cans inside the hoarding and sent the cap and overall after them. I'd only just put on my own on my cloth cap when a postman came around the corner. I gave him good I gave him good morning. He answered me unsuspiciously. Then I took to my heels and ran. Pretty good uh, long run though. I had no time to take a ticket, the porter told me the platform, I saw the train over in motion, two station officials blocked away.
I dodged him and clambered into the last carriage. Had made it. Three minutes later, an irate god interviewed me. He wrote out for me a ticket to Newton Stewart, a name which had suddenly come back to my memory. Then he conducted me from the first class compartment to a third class smoker. The apartment was occupied by a sailor and a stout woman with a shawl. Ah, it's a sale job catching trains. Aye, the impudence of that geared. He needed a scotch tongue to put him in his place. He was complaining of this way and no hain a ticket and her no fever till August 12 month. And he was objecting to this gentleman spitting. <laughs> oh, what a Scottish dialect, man. Holy crap. Or Scottish, I should say, not a dialect. Okay, week in Paris, uh, hot weather and politics, talk of a new ministry, post job, book theft, affairs in Berlin, new ministry chills, democratic ropes, Empire Day, yesterday's parade of 6,000 in Hyde Park, policeman on trial, Obesity can be reduced without drugs or starvation. Pitted traveling kids. You know, just hats and gowns for us. Hmm. Empire Day celebrations yesterday's parade in the Hyde Park. Annual Empire Day parade in Hyde Park took place yesterday afternoon. Rain prevented the attendance of Lord Roberts, who had promised to take the salute, but in his place, the Earl of uh, Meth, uh, Meth? Meth uh, received a salute from over 6,000 men and boys. The parade, which was under the patronage of Prince Alexander of Tech, Princess Alexandra of Tech, was commanded by Lieutenant General Sir Henry H. Saddle. Name. I had a solemn time traveling uh, north that day. Do, 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 do. I asked myself why, when I was still a free man, had I stayed in, on in London and not got the good of this heavenly country. Manchester, Leeds, and then we take a turn. Then I got out, got his little pocketbook and studied it. I was certain that the uh, scatter never did anything without a reason, and I was pretty sure there was a cipher in all of this. Cipher. I have a, a head for things like chess and puzzles, and I used to reckon myself pretty good at finding out ciphers. These sets of figures look like they corresponded to letters of the alphabet. Five hours, but none of the words answered. Didn't find a keyword, huh? What a place for a uh, what a place for a town. Hmm. 
dumb cries. <laughs> yeah, I woke up a dumb cries just in time to bundle out onto the private platform. There was a young man on the platform whose looks I didn't like, but he never glanced at me. I caught sight of myself in the mirror of an automatic machine with my brown face, my old tweeds and my slouch. I was the very model of one of the hill farmers who were now crowding into the third class carriages. I boarded a Galloway train, traveling with half a dozen in an atmosphere of shag and clay pot. They had come for from the weekly market and their mouths were full of prices. I heard accounts of how the lambing had gone up in the cane and the gouge and a dozen other mysterious waters. About half the men had launched, uh, had lunched heavily and were highly flavored with whiskey, but they took no notice of me. <laughs> About five o'clock, the carriage had emptied, and I was left alone as I am. Got out at the next station. It reminded me of one of those forgotten little stations in the Karoo. No station master with his spade over his shoulder sauntered to the train, took charge of a parcel and went back to his potatoes. While a child of ten received my ticket. Flat and very open, uh, well, that I shouldn't say it. Very flat up there. I was getting very hungry when I eventually came to a herd's cottage. Brown faced woman greeted me with the kindly shyness of the moorland places. When I asked for a nice lodging, she said I was welcome to the bed in the loft, and very soon she set before me a hearty meal of ham and eggs, bones and thick sweet milk. At the darkening and her man came in from the hills, a lean giant who in one step covered as much ground as three paces of ordinary mortals. He asked me no questions, for they had the perfect breeding of all dwellers in the wild. I could see they set me down as a kind of a dealer. I took some, I took some trouble to confirm their view. They refused any payment, and by 6 the next morning I had breakfasted and was driving southwards again. All the slackness of the past months was slipping from my bones, and I stepped out like a four-year-old. The notion was to return to the railway line uh, station or too farther on than the place where I had alighted yesterday and to double back. Wait until I saw the smoke of an east going train on the horizon. 
Then I approached the booking office and took a ticket for dumb fries. Fries is all dumb, huh? 